Hey, I just got through doing a video comparing these three bows behind me. Uh, of course, my, my Black Eagle I've shot for many, many, many years. The LVX, which was Muzzy's uh, first attempt at a lever bow. And this, which I call an LNAT. Uh, buddy on Facebook, Joey High, is the one that had his done that, that I seen and I wanted to do it. And he actually calls his a Muznat. Um, I'm not sure which one's going to catch on, but I am sure that there's going to be a lot more people wanting to do these conversions, especially when people start selling these LVXs really cheap. Um, but while I was doing that video, I had to do some adjustments on the bows to get them right, and I thought, you know, when I first got this bow, I had no clue how to adjust it. Uh, honestly, I still don't have a big clue about how to adjust it. But I thought I would uh, share a little video showing how you do some of the adjustments on it and maybe help some people out who are in the boat that I was in about a week ago. All right, so um, just to explain to you what an LNAT or MUSNAT is, is basically you take an LVX, you send it to um, G-String, and they use NAT parts to upgrade it. Um, they have a couple different ways they do that. Uh, this one is the full conversion, so which basically replaces everything on the LVX except for the riser. Uh, and the limb pockets, because the limb pockets are kind of got cool cut out here. But um, so you get you know your cables, your yokes, your saddles, uh, draw stops, hinges. Everything is is basically what they used to build in that. Uh, they also have another version that uh, utilizes the outers and the power limbs on the LVX, but changes all the rest of the stuff. So you would end up uh, losing these saddles and getting the nat saddles and um, hinges. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it looks a little different when they do it like that because basically if you look at this one you can see these saddles have a gap between them. Uh, if they use these there's not enough room there so you'll basically end up having these will be side by side. So there's a little bit of difference looking there. You will end up getting to utilize uh, these weird shaped outers if you like those. Um, but they'll convert it over for you. It makes a huge difference. I know there's a lot of people out there that are LVX bashers, and then there's those people out there that are LVX, I don't want to say lovers, but they're, they like their LVXs and say there's nothing wrong with them, and there's not. Trust me, there's really nothing wrong with the LVX uh, when you shoot just an LVX. But if you shoot an LVX and then you pick up an Onada or a G-String bow, which whatever, whatever one you want, or uh, even the Nitros, uh, you'll notice that even this one that has a power kit on it, has the upgraded string, the upgraded cables, it's got the roller guard on it. It has a binding feel when you draw. You, it feels like there's something catching or, or rubbing. Uh, you're not, you don't have a real smooth, consistent draw all the way back. Um, you may think you do if you have the kits on them, but do yourself a favor. Find somebody who has one of these other bows. Uh, draw your bow lay it down and pick that bow up and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. Now there's nothing wrong with the LVX. People on my boat all the time they get to shoot these things. I ended up with uh, five of them to set up, uh, got three of them ready for people and sent off and then ended up getting left with two of them. I've got a sponsor that bought these for these people and for myself this is actually his bow and he uh, leaves it on the boat for me to let other people use and for whenever he decides to come you know he has a bow to use. Um, you may look and you may say, hey, well, that's, you know, big upgrade for that. You could have went and you could have bought a Nat or you could, you could have basically went and, you know, maybe bought a G-Res, whatever, for the money that you have in that LVX. But like I said, my sponsor bought the bows, so I have nothing in the LVX. So basically, the only thing I have in this bow right now is what I paid Joey to do the upgrade for which was less than what you can buy a bone stock LVX for. So different people have different situations. I know there's some people out there bought these uh, LVXs when they first came out or, or bought it and realized it wasn't what they wanted and they turn around and they sell them for cheap. You could technically, if you could pick one of these up for a couple hundred bucks from somebody, you could send it in and get the cheaper LVX upgrade from uh, G-String and have less than what a new one costs. Uh, speaking of cost, I don't want to uh, throw this price out there really, but I'll tell you 
what I under, the way I understand it, if you want to utilize the limbs off an LVX, somewhere under 300 bucks, 270 to 300 bucks, you can have this bow uh, upgraded with the cables, yokes, saddles, draw stops, like this one is. If you want to go with the aluminum outers and the, uh, the Oneida power limbs, it's going to cost you right around 500 bucks. I, I actually had these outers, I mean, excuse me, these power limbs, so I didn't have to buy them, so I got in just a little bit cheaper than that. So, get all that out of the way just to tell you LVXs are fine. I let people shoot them all the time, they like them on my boat, but if I hand them this bow or I hand them my Black Eagle and let them shoot it, there's a world of difference. And, and they'll tell you that this is a much smoother drawing bow than that LVX is. Now, to the nitty gritty, what I started this video about. So when I got it, first got it, it came in um, with a slightly shorter draw length than I wanted. Uh, Joey said that he would take care of it and he would fix it. I mean, it's, it's no big deal. The, the problem in lied with my draw board versus his draw board and where it was measured. And it, it was just a, it, we should have had a little bit more communication. It was neither one of our faults, no biggie. Like I said, Joey said, hey, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Send it to me. I'll fix it. Great guy. Um, but I ended up doing some adjustment on it. I noticed on my bow, on this one, the outer here, you can see it's it's pre-drilled and tapped. Uh, it's got two sets of holes for them. When I got it, the saddles were in the upper location, like this way, and it was about an inch different draw. Well, I noticed that it had the, the holes down where I could move it, so I moved the saddles down, did some adjusting, and I actually got it to the 29 and a half, which is what I needed. Um, to talk about the adjustments, this thing has four slots on each one of these. Let's call this one the front one, this one the rear. So you have the, if I'm going to put a chart up of how this one specs out. It won't be the same as yours. They'll all be different. Um, it's not like you get five you know, feet per second slower or you get five you know, um, pounds different. It doesn't work that way. Um, but you will have an idea of of how moving each one of them affects your bow. So the further you move these strings this way, it affects your draw length and your poundage. They'll go, both of them will go down as you're moving string, as you're moving the cables this way. So if I needed to drop some poundage, I could move either one of these back. You find that the front one has affects the draw length more then it does uh, the weight uh, and the rear one will affect your draw length but uh, and, and weight but not as much the front one does a little bit more uh, adjustment uh, but if so you notice this one I have this one in the front one and this one in the back two if I swapped it and put this one in one and this one in two you would get pretty close to the same settings be just slightly different so there is a little bit of adjustment you can do there if it's just a little bit too heavy for you or if it's a little bit uh, too long or too short for you you can do a little bit of adjustment in there um, if you want let off a lot of people are asking and they say hey man it says you know I want let off of my bow now this right here if you can see it that's your your draw stop that's how you fetch your let off this thing will have let off in every position and no matter how you move these, the key is how you where you make those limbs stop. Do you make those limbs stop before the let off kicks in or after the let off kicks in? That'll affect how you have if you have let off or not. Um, it will if you want no let off. You'll need to have a longer beginning um, setting so that when you take that let off off or out, <laughs> um, you you won't be too short because basically. You'll draw it all the way back to where it hits the draw stops, and if it has let off, you'll have to run these in just a hair, which will actually shorten your draw length up just a hair. Not a lot, but some people uh, it may be too much, um, and you may want to you may end up having to change your adjustments here to make it fit your draw length. Uh, bow fishing, a lot of people like to shoot just a little bit shorter bow because they like to snap shoot. So you have all that adjustment here; it's no big deal. Um, like I said, I'll put that chart up. You'll be able to see kind of how it affected mine. 
I noticed that the further you go back, the less it affects. So like if I was to take this number one uh, and move it back, I don't think it affects um, affects the draw length until it gets to the last one, maybe the second to the last one. It goes from like a 29.5, 29.5, 29, maybe 28.5, something, something like that. But you'll see the chart in a minute. But it also would go like from this one to this one may change it 11 pounds. And then, but from this one to this one may only change it eight pounds and then to that one maybe six or five pounds so as you go back it will go down but it will affect it less the further back you go if that makes any sense to you just so you know so if you draw it and it's oh it's a little bit too long you can start moving this one back a little bit or this one back a little bit until you find the right position personally if i was buying a bow and i spend a lot of money on a bow i would do like i did make you a chart go through it set it up at each one Put it on a draw board, see what the draw length is, put it on a set of scales, see exactly how much weight it is, write them all down, put it in a nice fancy spreadsheet like I did, or write them on a piece of paper. That way, if you decide to go shoot a numbers tournament and go shoot a bunch of shad or little needlefish, you can look at your chart and be like, you know, I need to I need to bump the dang poundage down to about freaking 17, 18 pounds. You can do it without having to go, oh, okay, you know, which one do I need to put it in? Likewise, if you need a lot of pounds, you'll be shooting some deep, big fish. You'll want to make sure that one, they'll be, all of them will be a little bit closer to the front, but you can look at your sheet and you say, oh, hey, I'm going to shoot 47 pounds and no let off and 29 and a half inch draw here. I need to be on one, one. So that's how they affect it. Um, a bow uh, efficiency is, um, is a big priority to me. Um, I know I talked about how your poundage will go down as you go up. That's how you really want to adjust your poundage. Using your limb boat will adjust your poundage too. So if you get it right where you want it to, oh, it's the right draw length and everything, but it's like five pounds, let me crank my limb bolts out a little bit, that you can do that also. But your bow will be most efficient if you have your limb, boats, limb bolts screwed all the way down. Not to mention, once you get them screwed down, you get it to where you need to, you need to time or um, adjust your bow to where you can measure from a certain point on your riser to to your string in a 90 degrees on both sides. This one I actually pick, excuse me, I actually pick to here. So I'll measure from, from here to the string on both sides and I'll adjust it, uh, the limb bolts, to where I get them to be perfectly the same. Um, to do that, as you adjust out on a limb bolt, it'll adjust how far out or in this is. I believe it will let it out if you let your limb bolt out. I, I got to think about it in my head. So if you're, if this side over here is an eighth inch higher than this side over here, and you need this to go out, you'll back your limb bolt out just a hair. Likewise, if it was the opposite way, you would you would do this one. So get familiar with your bow. If you got any questions let me know you can always check out lever lovers on facebook uh, or one of joey's pages for the g-rex um or any of his other bows if you have any questions about them uh for those that are die hard my lvx is fine fans they are and guys have shot a lot of fish with them on my boat uh, matter of fact when i first got these bows i went to alabama and let a guy shoot my bow and he was murdering the fish first time he ever picked one up i kind of wanted to get it back from him as much as he was shooting it but um as long as you never um shoot something else then you'll be happy with this bow and it'll last you a long time and, and do what you need it to i do suggest getting a power limb kit i mean excuse me a power kit for the cables and the string because it did make a big difference in this but it was a huge difference having it upgraded like this uh, like I said, any questions, let me know, hit the comments, and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Anyway, if you're out there, be safe and get rid of your fish in a proper way. Whether you can sink them where you're at, make sure that you poke a hole in them. You get it right behind the fin right here and you poke a hole through it. Uh, bust that swim bladder so that they will sink. Go to the bottom. You don't want to just take them and throw them over because if their swim bladder isn't busted, then they're going to float. Next thing you know, they're going to be up against a dock or at a, a ramp and then people get mad. Make sure you get rid of them. Don't litter. People get mad enough at us because of our lights. Just make sure you 
when you're out there that you're responsible, you take care of stuff and you clean up after yourself so they have no reason to complain about us. Anyway, be safe.